Welcome to the Author Alchemist Podcast. I'm here to make your writing magic happen. I'm going to teach you how to use your superpowers to ignite, inspire, and encourage your creativity so that you can turn lead into gold. Join me, Kimba York, as I delve into the many mysteries of inspiration, motivation, and imagination. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Author Alchemist podcast. I'm glad to have you all back. We can energize you and kick you up and get you inspired and motivated to write with this episode. This week's alchemical lesson is pretty simple. I think you're going to like it. There are no rules. I know, sounds a bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? I'm actually basing this episode on a quote from W. Somerset Mom. I found it, I don't know where I found it, on a Tumblr, Facebook, who knows. Anyway, the quote is, there are three rules for writing a novel. Unfortunately, no one knows what they are. And the first time I read that, I literally burst out laughing, in real truth, laughing out loud, because... As someone who has spent her entire life from childhood reading books on how to write and how to write short stories and how to write novels, and then, of course, later how to write blog posts, how to write specific genres, now I'm fully aware that there are a lot of rules out there for writing, and I'm sure you've heard them as much as I have. And there are, of course, the the spoken rules, you know, the, the strunk and white style, this is what ye shall do and this is what you shall not do. And then there are the unspoken rules, you know, romance isn't legitimate and thrillers are cheap escapism. So whatever particular rules may be running around in your head, that's what we're talking about today. Those so many rules are just everywhere for everything and all that we do, and all that we want to write. And here's a question you probably don't think about too often, but why? Why are there so many rules? Well, I mean, we could go full on, you know, straw man meta and say that if there weren't for rules, entire society would break down and break apart, and we'd have no structure, and chaos would reign. I am not utterly convinced that that would be problem sometimes, but realistically speaking, yes. At that high level, rules are good. They're important. Laws, things like that. I value the speed limit, and as someone who does a lot of walking, I really like things like stoplights. Great stuff right there. Red means stop, green means go. Let's keep those rules right where they are. But when you get down to something like writing, the idea that there are rules is a little bit more ephemeral. And I think it's because, aside from the human brain's natural tendency to strive for order amidst chaos and to try to arrange things and make lists and pretty pictures and simple solutions, we want to know what the right thing is. We want to know we're doing things correctly. We want to know we're going in the right direction. It's a very primitive human need, and I'm not here to talk you out of that need, actually. In some situations, it's a good goal to have. Know where you're going and how you're going to get there. When it comes to writing, it's a double-edged sword. The benefit of rules is that they can guide you and teach you. If you've ever taken a writing class, however it was structured or whatever it was focused on, you know there's a value in the rules that you were taught and the exercises you were given to practice those rules and strengthen your writing abilities. Of course, as I said, it's a double-edged sword. What's the other half of it? Well, the problem with rules is they constrain and they limit you. It's very easy for rules to become their own ends, that you do something because it is a rule. 
not because it what fits the situation best. If you've ever been privileged enough to take some higher level writing or literature courses, one of the things you will be told, as I was told by my mother at a very young age, she didn't wait for those high level literature courses. She just threw me in the deep end of the pool. And she told me, and you would be told as well, that the importance of rules is knowing when you can break them. We get into trouble when we don't know the rules, but we also get into trouble when we never break the rules. So that's what I love about this quote from Somerset Mom. There are three rules for writing, but no one knows what they are. Because the rules change, oftentimes they change depending on the era, or even the person, even the genre. Rules can be dramatically different in context, right? So I will always say that you do need to know what the rules are for writing for your genre for yourself. I encourage you not to get tied up in them. Don't spend all your time looking for the correct way to write what you want to write. Know the rules. Know that there are suggestions. Know the difference between a rule versus how things are commonly done. Definitely not the same thing. But don't get obsessed with finding the rules that will, I don't know, save you, make things easier, uh, take away all the risk. Writing is all about risk. Rules are all about no risk whatsoever. (laughs) You follow the rules, there's no risk. You won't get in trouble. That statement presupposes a lot of things that are not true for any creative endeavor. I mean, I'm speaking specifically to writers here and writers who want to write genre novels, but it does apply to any group of creative artists, whether they're drawing with pencil or writing with words or dancing across the stage. Rules are valuable, but they can also inhibit you in very damaging ways. So I'm going to give you a few pieces of advice about how to deal with rules. Because as I said, you should know the rules, but eh, with a grain of salt. So here we go. One, remember that rules and creative endeavors are more like guidelines. Certainly there are recommendations that are invaluable to what you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to write a romance novel to market, then using the romance beats method of writing it is going to be a very helpful way for packaging it up neatly and getting it out there on the market. But again, that's not a law. No one is going to come along and shake a stick at you for not following romance beats exactly. All right. Two. The more you know, the more you can break successfully. So piggybacking on the idea that rules are guidelines and not laws, the other idea is, well, you still need to know what they are. If you aren't going to follow a typical structure for your genre, you need to know that you aren't doing that, how it'll affect the reader experience and what you're doing differently that might make it a more unique experience for readers than what they were expecting. Just don't hop in there and expect it all to work magically, right? The third point I want to make is that making up your own rules is totally acceptable. How is that different from breaking rules, right? Well, it's all tied together. You break rules because you know what the rules are, and so you're consciously breaking them. You've made a decision not to do what those rules tell you to do because they're guidelines and you have that freedom as an author. The more you know, the more you can break successfully. But that leads to the idea that creating your own rules is not the same as breaking a rule or doing something just to be in opposition to the rule. If you're creating your own rules, if you're designing a way to write that fits your personality and your creativity and the way you think, then making up those rules 
is important for you and something you need to spend time and invest in. And those rules can be silly rules, like what kind of music you listen to while you're writing, or it could be very structured rules, such as a very specific style of outlining that you do, or even a specific way that you construct the acts of your story, whether they're three acts or five acts. Maybe you've broken it down into two acts. Maybe you've broken it up into 16 acts. I mean, People will tell you you're doing it wrong, but if those are your rules and you're following your rules, then eventually people will follow along with you. Just be aware that you're doing it and have your rules set up and quantified in a way that works for you. And I know quantified is kind of a mathematical term, and I don't mean to scare all y'all writers who, like me, are not mathematical people, but just think of it as building the framework for your writing and your stories that make sense to your brain and enables you to tell the story that you want to tell and, as always, that you want to read. The final suggestion I have is that you should keep in mind the three rules of writing a novel will be different from anyone else's. The reason that that Somerset Mom's quote rings so true for us is not because no one knows what the rules are, but we're in on the joke. We know that everybody knows what those rules are. We all know the three rules for writing a novel because there are rules. They're the things that we do for ourselves and the rules that we follow in order to accomplish our goals. They're not anybody else's rules, really. You can write them out and maybe some people will find them helpful and follow those rules to a path that is successful for them. Not discounting that, but the thing is, every author is such a unique personality that no matter how much you're adhering to the tropes or the beats or the standard construction or you know, the act structure, whatever, you still have your own rules. And those are your three rules for writing a novel. And that's it for this week. To wrap up, the alchemical lesson takeaway is don't get obsessed about following the rules. You can always go back and fix things or do things differently. It's better to break free of constraints and let your creativity run amok. Thanks for listening and playing along with me this week. I'm always glad to share my thoughts with you, and I'd love for you to share your thoughts with me. Please comment or email me, and let's get some dialogue started. I'd really like to hear from my listeners the problems they have stumbling through motivation and inspiration and productivity That is my focus. That is how I want to help you. So let me know the specific problems you're having. And hopefully I can put some of that together for a future podcast. Drop by my website and sign up for the Bulletproof Writer free email course, which uses superhero, superpower metaphors to help you supercharge your writing. It's a fun course. You get an email from me once a day for two weeks advising you on how to kickstart your writing, no matter what your stumbling blocks are currently. So please sign up for that. Again, it's free. Drop by my website and uh, there's lots of places where you can just plug in your email address and get on the list and get that started because I want to help you write. That's what we're here for. And again, keep an eye out for the new course that I'm developing, Fan Fiction Academy, The Courage to Write, and hopefully have that launched a month or so. I don't know. There's a lot of work in that involved. Anyway, y'all have a good day. I look forward to talking with you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Author Alchemist podcast. I'm Kim Boo York, and I hope this episode has helped to clear away the cobwebs from your inspiration and given you the power to write the stories you want to read. Now, it's time for us to get some writing done. Talk to y'all soon.